Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on Thursday, October 20th. I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we're here to read our daily lectionary texts and discuss them and see what God might have for us today. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll open us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the many blessings that you have provided for us. I pray, Lord, that as we read your word today, that we would be increasingly transformed into the people that you have us to be. Lord, there are so many concerns in this world right now, and we're mindful of the ways that um, we, don't, we don't have control over these things. Uh, but Lord, we trust that you do, and ask that you would continue to exercise your sovereign grace over, over every situation, uh, the challenges and the, uh, the blessings. Um, help us to uh, hear from you, especially as you speak to us through your word today. We thank you and praise you. In, in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to start this morning with Psalm 1, what is that, 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore, my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit falls. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your steadfast love, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries, for I am your servant. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our prophetic word today comes from Micah chapter 5. Now you are walled around with a wall. Siege is laid against us. With a rod they strike the ruler of Israel upon the cheek. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And he shall be the one of peace. If the Assyrians come into our land and tread upon our soil, we will raise against them seven shepherds and eight installed as rulers. They shall rule the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod with the drawn sword. They shall rescue us from the Assyrians if they come into our land or tread within our border. Then the remnant of Jacob, surrounded by many peoples, shall be like dew from the Lord, like showers on the grass which do not depend upon people or wait for any mortal. And among the nations, the remnant of Jacob, surrounded by many peoples, shall be like a lion among the animals of the forest, like a young lion among the flocks of sheep, which when it goes through, treads down and tears in pieces with no one to deliver. 
Your hand shall be lifted up over your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. In that day, says the Lord, I will cut off your horses from among you, and will destroy your chariots, and I will cut off the cities of your land, and throw down all your strongholds, and I will cut off sorceries from your hand, and you shall have no more soothsayers, and I will cut off your images and your pillars from among you, and you shall bow down no more to the work of your hands, and I will uproot your sacred poles from among you, and destroy your towns, and in anger and wrath I will execute vengeance on the nations that did not obey. Revelations chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke, like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given authority, like the authority of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to damage the grass of the earth or any green growth or any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torture them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torture was like the torture of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. In appearance, the locusts were like horses equipped for battle. On their heads were what looked like crowns of gold. Their faces were like human faces, their hair like women's hair, and their teeth like lion's teeth. They had scales like iron breastplates, and the noise of their wings was like the noise of many chariots with horses rushing into battle. They have tails like scorpions with stingers, and in their tails is their power to harm people for five months. They have as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he is called Apollyon. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. And Psalm 81. Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song. Sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our festal day. For it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance for the God of Jacob. He made it a decree in Joseph when he went out over the land of Egypt. I hear a voice I had not known. I relieved your shoulder of the burdens. Your hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called and I rescued you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, while I admonish you, O Israel, if you would but listen to me, there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not bow down to a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice. Israel would not submit to me. 
so I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Then I would quickly subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their doom would last forever. I would feed you with the finest of wheat, and with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. And our final psalm today is Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think before we get into looking at our text today, I, I kind of want to jump back to the end of Psalm 147, because we usually do our midweek connection on Wednesday, and we usually then, Natalie reads the first 11 verses of Psalm 147, but uh, the second half of 147, uh, 12 through 20, I guess that is, um, when it talks about how uh, especially in verse 20, he has not dealt with us with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. There's this, uh, I think, a concept that we probably need to keep in mind when reading through these texts that can sometimes seem... Um, uh, sometimes even a little contradictory in a way, um, but uh, but we you know we don't we don't believe that they are contradictory. But this uh, this concept that the people that God is writing to are His chosen people. These are the people that He uh, that God has initiated um, covenant with. That God has uh, initiated um, every aspect of their lives, even those difficult things uh, that they would be slaves in Egypt for 400 plus years, uh, that they would go into exile at different times, but then they would be redeemed and that. And this whole cycle of redemption that I think we see all throughout scripture um, needs to be, I think, held in this context. And so if God is dealing with his people in a way that uh, the rest of that Psalm 147, talking about the blessings that he gives, the peace mm -hmm. that he brings, uh, uh, scattering down um, hail and uh, the uh, who can stand before his cold, these, these images of just the power and the majesty of God, that he right. is the only one that we should worship, uh, but he has both justice and blessings, that he has... Right. Uh, judgment and redemption, that all of these things need to be held in that context of that the entirety of Psalm 147. Right. And I think, I think that when we do that, then we can more appreciate, especially um, the difficult words from Micah, the mm -hmm. difficult words from Revelation, right. um, and then we can even see uh, from the gospel passage with um, Jesus being a little... Um, forthright with uh, right. the, the, the tension between the religious leaders not being neighbors and then the Samaritan being a neighbor. So right. all that, that was, that's just a really long way to say God's in control. God is good. God has got all of this. Right. And there is judgment, but there is 
mercy. Right. And there is this, and like you said, it's the whole redemptive cycle. There are times that God's people are put into exile because, you know, he, it, Psalm 81, I turn them over to their stubborn hearts. Right. You know, if they refuse to follow me, there will be a consequence. But he always calls back into relation. He has not left them. It's just a correction. Right. And so... So uh, if you've been following along in your daily lectionary texts, we've been in Micah for just really the past week. And uh, Micah is one of those interesting prophets. We, he starts off during the days of uh, King Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah of Judah concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. And so there's this context between um, Micah comes in at the end of one of the decent kings and then goes through uh, again the decline where uh, the people of Israel are um, interacting with their Assyrian overlords and how are they trying to establish some peace uh, but at the same time trying to exercise more of their own autonomy Um, but there was a time of, of relative peace during Micah's prophecy. Uh, Mm -hmm. There was a time when um, there was even actually relative prosperity in the midst of this. And the problem was that the people had essentially made a deal with the devil that we will trade our um, theological righteousness for temporal material gain. And uh, uh, the... Um, and, and I know it's not even hardly getting into chapter 5 because, again, some of these prophetic words are, are difficult to understand, uh, totally out of context. And so um, thinking about how if there was this, uh, I, I don't know how that's really any different than today, right? How so many of us are focused on our own material well-being, right. especially as we see so much chaos in other places of the world, we're worried about our own inflation, but rather than always caring for other people, we try to accumulate more for ourselves. Right. And so there's this tension then between I want to look out for number one. And security. And I've security. got to secure and know that we are okay. You know, my... The, my the people. Wall, yes, my people. My, my you know, yes. our home. We are good. We are good. The, you know. And we, we will wall ourselves off sometimes, right. even that whole you know, beginning of chapter 5. Well, you're mm-hmm. walled around with walls, and now there's a siege against you. And, and don't we all, in a way, feel as if we are being besieged? Right. That if, uh, you know, the world is a difficult place out there, and I just want to build my own walls up, and right. then the people on the outside are they're attacking me. But, but uh, what we find really great about this whole, um, this whole of this chapter is this is one of the... Um, one of the scriptures that we will hear during our Advent season and, and birth of Christ, you know, but you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, are one of the little clans of Judah, but you, uh, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel. And this was the prophecy that when the, uh, the wise men, the Magi, came and they were talking to Herod and they inquired, well, where was the king of Israel to be born? They used this as, well, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. And so isn't it interesting, though, that at Bethlehem being a small, relatively insignificant town outside of Jerusalem, you know, within a day's walk or so, but but just small and just whatever. And from that lowly place is going to be the one that comes to deliver. And so isn't it interesting that God frequently uses the small and the weak to do right. things that people wouldn't expect? Right. Well, the impossible. Right. He does the impossible. Right. So the rest of that chapter, Micah is moving into what is the hope that is coming from God? You have put your hope in things that will not satisfy and right. ultimately will be taken off into exile. God is saying that hope is going to come from an unexpected place. Hope is going to come from something small and humble. Um, how do we look for that? How do we even look for that today? Um, how do we... Uh, not put our confidence in uh, the things of this world right. when we know that the God is the one in whom we should have confidence. Right. right. So if we jump over to that Revelation passage, Revelation 9, uh, I, you know, I, I can't help but think of some of the 
uh, popular um, literature about Revelation and how people are like, oh, I wonder what these locusts look like, and they're trying to, you know, the scorpions, and do they really have, you know, are they are like helicopters today, or are they, right. you know, different body armor that soldiers wear, and they're trying to turn this into um, every little moment of. Um, you know, current events is some sort of right. application or fulfillment right. of this. Fulfillment, that's the word I was looking right. for. Right. Um, and, and so, so again, with any reading of Revelation, and again, as we've been looking at our daily lectionary texts a lot from Revelation, remember that Revelation is apocalyptic literature. It is meant to be um, pictures, word pictures, that describe things that are in a way kind of indescribable and uh, whether we nail down every little wing or noise they make or chariot that they make it's this is one of these ways that God is judging the unrighteousness of the world as a whole Uh, going back to that Psalm 147 where God does not deal with any other nation this way because these are his chosen people. Now we see how God is going to interact with the world. There's judgment that's coming down. Uh, People are, uh, you know, this kind of terrifying that they're going to be longing for death. Right. And the death will flee from them. Um, Right. It's interesting that, you know, when we look at these other things and we... I don't know, you look at Micah and you have these people that are, they are turning and they are looking for security in themselves. And all of these things, they have their own, they have these images, these idols, these gods, they have all of these things. Are, are those the people that are going to be experiencing that, mm-hmm. that judgment and that consequence? And if so, the very thing that they're trying, they're trying to build up and preserve their own life. And yet here they are wishing for death. Isn't that interesting? And you know, it's that is withheld, hmm. and so just an just an interesting. You know, I don't know. Right. Just, well, you know, other passages. Jesus says, uh, "Those who seek to save their life will lose, lose it, it, and yeah. those who lose their life for my yeah. sake will save, save it." it. Right. So it's yeah. Why you know God is always doing something right. different. And I don't know what to. And I you know I'd have to really sit and read both of them. But you read the Micah, and then I was reading the Revelation, and just like we were talking the other day, we don't well. Somebody read ahead of time today. I didn't read ahead of time. But it's always interesting how you see, and I don't know, I'd have to go back and really look at it, but so you have the lion Mm. among the flocks of sheep, treads, tears down, all of these things, but you see the same things. You have the lion again. Right. You know, it's... It, it's just interesting how you see the lion and you have the horses and you have... Um, you see those same creatures throughout... And I don't know. I don't know if there's anything to that. Um, it's certainly worth looking at, isn't it? Right. right. And so it would take some time to really look at that and look at the role here versus the role that we see here. But um, I did, that just, it jumped out at me when I was reading this. I was like, those are exactly what you mm. had just read mm. in Micah. There were several references to the same types of animals. Right. And so, not that I know where to go with that, but just, it was interesting. Right. Well, and and so many of the prophetic texts, uh, you know, both Old and New Testament, mm-hmm. can frequently have a more immediate fulfillment and then a future right. fulfillment. Um, this is one of the reasons why in the church we follow a liturgical calendar where we remember the events of Christ's life or different uh, festivals or feasts of things like this. It's to remind us that God, who stands outside of time, is uh, working in time and also bringing elements, uh, and and, and difficult to explain, I get it, but bringing (laughs) elements of, of future judgment into the past Right. Or into the present, even something that we as Christians already understand and appreciate uh, through the judgment that God poured out on Jesus for the punishment of sins. But uh, but that judgment will then be poured out again at the end of times, was being described in Revelation, where where uh, the fulfillment of that. So again, when you're looking at prophecies, 
we see this particular prophecy about Jesus being born in Bethlehem. We mm -hmm. know that was fulfilled when Jesus was born. Right. But then the future role of the remnant, what are these, you know, how are the people of God going to uh, interact throughout time? Right. Um, and so, so let's go ahead and jump real quick to the parable yes. of the Good Samaritan. Um, very familiar parable. Right. I don't think there's anything new today that we can offer about right. it because you've, you've probably heard hundreds of sermons about the parable of the Good Samaritan. But one of the things that I was reading recently, um, if you think about um, the antagonism that Micah is obviously addressing between the Samaritans and the Jewish people at that particular time and those right. particular reason, regions, that that had been a long-standing uh, animosity between those people groups based on relative levels of faithfulness, you know. Right. Um, but in this parable, um, not only does God, uh, not only does Jesus choose to use the Samaritan as the hero in the story, what's interesting about it is the Samaritan himself had to violate his cultural norms right. to do this. It wasn't as if only the Jews would go, oh, well, you know, the evil Samaritan is the hated one. The Samaritan himself. That was the belief on the other side as it well. It worked in both right. directions. Both so for this Samaritan people. to violate his own cultural standards uh, in order to actually then fulfill uh, God's intentions, you know, right. humans are meant to love and serve and care for one another. You know, the, the teacher of the law uh, had it right. Love the Lord your God with their heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbors yourself. That's been it. But then he couldn't stop. He had to show yes. how clever he was. <laughs> who, who is my neighbor? Um, and, and so again, isn't it interesting how love really is the answer? love your neighbor uh, and right. if you the Samaritan um, so the Jew the Jewish people would have heard this as oh you know Samaritan is the hero but the Samaritan himself violated his own cultural standards to do the right thing right and that and that and actually I I don't know if I'd ever thought about it that way before but it was right. it was pretty um, pretty interesting to think about how how humans and, and and don't we see this everywhere I think humanity, should have the capacity to love and serve others and, right. and how infrequently we choose to do that. Right. Well, and, you know, it's easy to love those who love us. It's mm. easy to reciprocate when it's given to us. Right. But when it's not, it's so, it can be so difficult, but yet that is exactly, it's, that is who we are called to love. Those who mm. have nothing to offer, those who can't or won't reciprocate, right. um, that is, that's what we're asked to do. Mm. And that's what Jesus did. That, and that's, you know, that's what the Samaritan did. Right. He's loving someone who had nothing to offer. I mean, it, right. and so it's, you know, it's easy to love those that love us, but we're called to do more. I think we, well, we are called to do more. Um, and how many of our world's problems would just really evaporate if we were operating really under love God and love your neighbor? Absolutely. You wouldn't have to build up big walls around yourself. You wouldn't have to uh, be worried about, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always think mm. when I'm driving, if I was standing in the line at the bank, could I speak to the person in front of me the way I spoke to the person in the car in front of me. <laughs> but I mean, that's true though, you know, and the same thing, people, you know, keyboard warriors or whatever you want to call them. But if you were standing face to face with someone, could you say that to them? Hmm. Could you treat them that way? Could you say those things about them based on a belief or whatever, you know, I mean, if somebody looks different or believes something different than you, could you say that to their face? Right. Or, you know, can, from the safety of your own home, you can type that from sitting behind your steering wheel. You can have all kinds of things to say. 
but if you you're have a problem with today, Natalie? Actually, not today. Okay, not today. That's good. Not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> I was driving the back roads of West Texas. It was right. a good day. Right. There was nice. nobody on the road. Well, right. not a farmer, but right. you know. That's can't be upset good. with farmers. No, you can't. <laughs> but, you know, if, if you were face-to-face with someone, could you say the things that, could you treat them, mm. you know? and To dehumanize them. Right. Absolutely, yes. And that's exactly, I think, what we do. And I think that's what technology, and I think that's what society has allowed us to do. Right. You don't even have to get out of your car to get your groceries. You can just get them put in the back of your car. But that lack of interaction, I think, sometimes does exactly that dehumanizes hmm. and um because i think when we have to look people in the face and interact with them um i think that's a good thing and um i think there's a lot of value in that because that keeps us in touch with our own humanity as hmm. well hmm. and so like it's hard to love your neighbor if you're not doing anything ever with your neighbor right like if you if you've completely insulated yourself uh, it, you know, you're not uh, at war with your neighbor, neighbor, but you're certainly but not you, loving them. Right, right. Mm. So community, love God, love each other. Yeah, sounds reasonable. Uh, yeah, and you know, closing up, you know, closing up again with you know, that Psalm one sixteen. It's like how how should we respond? You know, to God's great love. It's uh, continue to praise His name. Continue right. to bring yourself into the right worship of the Lord um, and and in the presence of all his people I think it's one of the one of the ways that uh, I, I love technology and how we can connect uh, over distance but if we don't find ways to connect with each other face to face have a chance to see one another um, uh, then then you lose out you know there's the illusion of intimacy without uh, without actual responsibility to one another so right. seeing one another being face to face with one another I think is so so very very important so I pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people not anonymously online I don't know plug for the day <laughs> get, get, join get us 10 30 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> worship at 10 30 on sunday morning yeah see you in church or or not if not our church in church somewhere, somewhere. you know go be with people go be with people even those that might drive you nuts even those right. who especially those that drive you nuts especially. especially those that drive you nuts yeah things might be different things might not be the you know the way you want it to be but you know hey i don't think the world revolves around you so um you know let it revolve around uh, your love for God and the way you love other people, which means serve them, put their needs ahead of your own, and don't be like the don't be like the people of Micah's day who built walls around themselves. Right. Well, I guess uh, that's probably good for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Once we again, hit all the high points. we hit all the high points. <laughs> Once again, good stuff. God's word. <laughs> Keep reading it on your own. Keep trusting that God is going to reveal to you through His Spirit what he wants you to do and then ask for the gift of his grace to uh, to put it into practice so why don't you close us in prayer Natalie sounds good gracious Lord we thank you for your words to us today and um, we praise you for uh, your greatness and your power and um, I pray that we put our trust and our faith in you and not of the things of the world that we recognize your role in even in our daily lives, in the mundane and in the ordinary. And I pray that as we um, see those things, that we enter into a deeper relationship with you. And as we do that, that we do a better job of loving our neighbors. Um, You know, we saw you sent your son Jesus and we saw what that means. We saw what it was to love those around us. He was the perfect example of that. And I just pray that we, we love those around us better. And we uh, seek out people to love and care for and that we are um, members of communities interacting with one another, loving others and inviting others into that. And in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day. Bye bye.